Good morning, everybody. Uh, thank you for joining us today in this exciting event. Uh, it's called Rewind and Resolve with Automation Playback in Manufacturing. As you can see, um, Automation Playback is a unique feature. It accelerates commissioning and it reduces uh, fault finding errors in your production. And these are incredible, important values. Uh, we focused it today also on capital intensive industry like automotive. So the agenda you have seen in the announcement, uh, but let me introduce ourselves. My name is Stanley Nijlen. I'm the industry market manager for automotive in Europe for Omron. Um, and today with me is Wayne Corp, a team leader in automation and training. Good morning, Wayne. Good morning, Stanley. Good morning, everybody. So good to have you with us. So today, today we look at the possibilities of NX5 automation playback and especially the use in the automotive industry. So imagine that you can uh, rewind time and that you can find with precision where an error has occurred or when the production is not running as you want. So let's start the journey into uh, the world of the NX5. I will first introduce the NX5 controller. Um, it has a new level of integration where we not only have the control, but also uh, the safety and uh, the other core features integrated into one controller. So, for example, there is uh, this uh, built-in direct database access with MQQT, uh, MQTT and OPC UA. What is important in the NX5 is that we uh, synchronize all the control IO bus and motion network in one single cycle. So the data accuracy, uh, the synchronization is a unique feature of the whole SysMac platform and with NX5, what we talk about in specific, specifically. And the new automation playback functionality is where we're going to focus on. Uh, what is this new automation playback functionality? It's the first controller which can collect and record data in a specific window while doing um, the sensor, the motion, and the ladder programming without any loss of performance. So we have a stable production performance and quality, and at the same time, we record all the features that, that we have in a machine recorder built-in. You can see it as some kind of black box in an airplane or a dash cam that you can record what's happening and play back later, but without any performance loss. So we have the possibility of video playback with an external camera, the data playback of all the data pinpoints inside the unit and the fully ladder playback. And later on in the demonstration, you can see on which trigger you can find it uh, all back and uh, what's happening. So, why is this so important in the automotive industry? In the automotive industry, <clears throat> ACES or CASE is leading. Every single manufacturing has this philosophy that cars need to be autonomous, connected, electrified and share. So we have a very complex, high capital intensive product, which has a lot of electrical mechanical parts. All these parts, uh, some are for fun, but most of them are for safety, like the ADAS uh, support systems for braking, for uh, uh, parking and these kind of things. So they need to be 100% accurate and every single flaw that is found in production is thrown away, uh, not reworked uh, because it's a safety feature of a car. Um, then people want to have individualization in the car. Uh, you can have a lot of options, yes or no. You can even have them over the air installed. And this electronic and connectivity is even increasingly making the car more complex to build. And of course, it's a global industry. There are a lot of decentralized functions in the automotive. There's R&D in this country. There's IT in the other country. There's production in four different locations making the same product. And this is uh, what makes the automotive industry a truly 
complex globalized industry. So we want to now move to a live demo of the product. And after that, uh, after Wayne has shown you the live demo, we will highlight again the points that we uh, want you to take away with this presentation. Wayne, back to you. You're on mute. My apologies. Thanks, Stanley. So I'm just going to give you a, a brief demonstration of automation playback. So the scenario here is that I've been sent some files that have been recorded on a machine that has exhibited an error. So the servos on the machine have stopped abruptly. So the maintenance engineer sent me all the files provided by automation pl playback for review. One of the files that's sent to me is a complete backup of the controller. So I get an exact copy of the application code running in the machine for my analysis. So that's what this is what you're seeing here. This is the code that I've been sent. So if we firstly just review how automation playback is set up, there's a little button here specifically for automation playback in the controller settings. And there's essentially three sections that can be set up. The first section, the common settings, is where we enable the automation playback functionality within your machine. And then we've got two sets of parameters here. So we can have two ways in which automation playback works within the machine environment. And we can switch those using application code within the machine. So here we're going to be working with sample settings one. We'll look at those in a moment. This is the button that the maintenance engineer set up previously so that I get a complete backup of the project of the machine so I can see the application code running currently on the machine. We have a couple of options here to ensure that we've got space on the SD card that's inserted in the controller so that we can ensure that we've got enough space on that card to record the application playback data at a later point. Let's have a look at the sample settings themselves. So this is more the area where we set up how automation playback will operate, which mode of operation, and the trigger that will actually start automation playback for us. So here at the top, we give the sample settings a simple name. And it's included in the automation playback, we've asked the controller to record some axis variables. So these are the servo axes. We can pick up the position and the velocity of the servo on every scan of the controller, thousands of times a second. And down here are all the programs or the POUs that are in within the application, which are echoed here within the project. So we can even decide which parts of the program we want to record with automation playback to really refine down to particular programs that we want to look at uh, issues. And the final part is the trigger. So I just click here. You can see that we've a variable here, a variable within the program that we want to use to trigger automation playback when there is an error on the production line. Now there's two modes of operation with automation playback, pre and post trigger method. This is where the trigger will initiate a recording post trigger sampling, but we will always already be recording data prior to the trigger point. And we can set up time before and after the trigger point that we want to record this data. Now with automation playback, we have up to 15 minutes worth of data recording in total. So in essence, we could have seven and a half minutes before and seven and a half minutes after the trigger point is enabled. Another method of automation playback is what we call start save trigger method. This is where we introduce a second trigger which will start automation playback recording data. And we set a time that we want that automation playback data to be recorded for. Once it's complete, we have the original trigger point, which will decide within our application whether we want to record that data. So this method of automation playback could be used on a part by part basis, recording information about a part and deciding whether it's a good or a bad part at the end of that production cycle and decide whether to record that data. OK, so now we have a look at the setup of automation playback. Let's look at automation playback itself. So I'm just opening up automation playback mode within Sysmax Studio. 
now I can go and select those files that we spoke about earlier. So I'm going to go and retrieve from my desktop. And the bin file that the maintenance engineer sent me relating to the error on a part or the stoppage of a machine. I can now record, as uh, Stanley mentioned earlier, we have the possibility of recording data from CCTV video cameras located around the machine. And we've got the option of up to four different video feeds that we can import into the project. So I'm going to import CCTV video from a bad part and it's in the MKV video format. Let's start the playback. So just to remind you, we're now dealing with data that has come from a working machine that had an issue. An automation playback has captured the data from the machine so that we can review it in real time now. So the first thing you'll see is a video image coming from the machine. I'll just move that over here. And we'd have a, a, an iPhone on front of the, the demo case here, just to give you the real-time video signature, if you like. Here we have the playback control. So from here, if I press the start button, you'll start seeing things happening on the video file. And you'll also see corresponding changes here within the application, again, in real time. If we look at the right-hand side here, we've got a timestamp coming from the video and a cycle or scan count coming from the automation playback data. And we can go back by single scans. You can see the scan number here going down by one. We can go back through the video file or forward by one single scan if we want to. This bar here in front of the red line is our 30 seconds that we set up pre-trigger. And the bar to the right of that is the five seconds we set up for post-trigger. And the trigger point itself is represented by this red line. We can, you can imagine if we have 15 minutes worth of data, we can change the play rate up to eight times here to enable us to review the data quickly, quickly through that 15 minutes worth of data captured. And this button here will take us to the final trigger point. And we can scroll through what's going in the, on in the machine and you'll see that the video and the uh, application data changes uh, as we scroll. Another tool we have is our graphical playback chart. And with this, we can pick items of data from our application. So for instance, this move relative command, which will move the server motor a relative distance, we can drag and drop that into our chart and it will show us the data for the full sample period of this bit or this Boolean going on and off within the data. We can also add variables directly. So I mentioned earlier that we can add in data around the server itself. So the axis that we have in the image is called wheel. We can pick up the actual position of the wheel and add that to our data graph for analysis. We can even add the velocity of the wheel into our data analysis. So now you will see a review of exactly what happened on the machine with the server, if I can size the, the window. So let me scroll down here. So if we look at the move here, we can see a nice acceleration, deceleration, acceleration, deceleration profile. But now we can see the abrupt stop that was reported by the maintenance engineer, where we've accelerated our servo, travel at a constant speed and immediately stop. If we want to find out where that happened in our time, we've got a little cursor here that we can move to a particular point and work out instantaneous values at that point. So the velocity is at zero here and the position of the axis at the time of the error was 11129, <coughs> excuse me. We can also do this analytically using the fourth tool in automation playback, which is the search playback data. So in this instance, we could look for the point in the process where we reach this position of 11129. So I'm just going to add in the wheel actual position again. 
and we're going to try and find within the data the point where we reached that position where the error occurred, 11129. So now if we look at the bottom of the screen here, we can see all the instances where we reached that position. And this is the very point in our uh, logged data where we reached that position. So if we double click on this point, automation playback will take us to that point in the variables, in the application, and also in the video. And you notice here now that in the video, we've got some error lights coming on within the video playback. So this is giving us some context information about the application. If we move through a few frames of the automation playback, we also see within the application that the power to the wheel has now been removed, indicated by this green um, conduction line, if you like, through the function block. So the function block has gone into fault. So now we can start delving into our code and find out the true cause of the, the fault. Or in this case, we can review the video and we can see that someone here has removed the communications cable to the drive, putting it into error and then reset the machine. So it's obvious from the video file what's happened within this instance. And now the drive has repowered now that the error has been reset by the operator. Another key feature of automation playback is that we can import the golden part, the part where there is no error, and overlay it onto our error part that we're showing here, which is called comparison in automation playback. So very much like before, I can go into the files that the maintenance engineer sent me and pick up those golden parts in uh, parameter files and also in video files. So now we have two images within our uh, video playback tool, the bad part and the good part. And we have in the graphical playback, the playback chart, we can see the original bad part in this blue turquoise color. And the good part is being overlaid with a gray trace in the background. So you can notice in the original part, there's more moves in the gray trace than there is in the blue but we can align the data in time for analysis. So here in the bad part, we had one, two, three, four, five moves where the error occurred. So we can align with the alignment tool, the fifth occurrence of a move for both the traces using the variable B move relative, which is the the variable in the application that initiates those moves, align the data. And now we can see that the fifth move has been aligned in time using automation playback, where we have the error part and the, per the perfect part continuing with three more moves. So hopefully that gives you an insight into the capability briefly of automation playback. Um, I'll return to uh, Sandy now for some more discussions. I unmute myself because uh, I, I saw that, that was. Uh, thank you, Wayne. That was that was amazing. I, I wish that uh, I'm in the industry for quite a long time, and when I was a commissioning engineer a long time ago, I wish I had this tool because it's really interesting to see how you can play back and also overlay good with bad parts uh, not only with ai and data analysts we do that but this is especially for commissioning and and for fault finding an incredible tool and because nx and the whole sysmac platform has all this motion ladder already synchronized adding it with a camera makes it an incredibly powerful tool what i can see so thank you for that um, in production, uh, we have, um, for example, in cars, uh, in, in general, or in, in many factories I've been in, every 30 seconds, a car leaves uh, uh, the production line. So within a minute, we have e easily an equal value of 100k euro uh, leaving 
the factory. But so if you have a downtime of a minute, you can lose quite an amount of uh, money uh, if the downtime takes too long. So how can automation playback help with reducing uh, this loss of uh, cost? Yeah, obviously when the line, the line stoppage is identified, APB can recall up to 15 minutes of cycle data. And this can, as we saw in the setup in the demo, we can set that data to seven and a half minutes prior or 14 minutes prior and one minute after the trigger event. So once we've identified a stoppage, which could be a button on an HMI or code within your application that measures the speed of the line, for instance, we can then use APB to go back through that data instantly and move through and see what the cause was, the root cause of the issue of the stop and how that affected the line after the trigger. Okay, <clears throat> so, so that's uh, really uh, helpful then to reduce uh, the amount of minutes that, that you have the breakdown uh, then. And there's another, and every industry has it, but also in the automotive, the, the skills shortage is really a, a, an issue. and and. Uh, commissioning a line and there's a lot of change in the automotive industry from internal combustion engine to electrified and there's a lot of rebuilding in, in uh, parts manufacturing but also in car manufacturing so we need a lot of uh, commissioning so how will APB reduce the commissioning time to take a line into production? Well APB will aid the main the um maintenance engineer and the, uh, the machine manufacturer to be able to check his code thoroughly at scan level. So this is one of the key areas of automation playback where, and where automation playback can help. During the setup process, it's all the information that can be uh, recorded at uh, scan time with the controller. So if there are any issues during uh, the maintenance period or the pre-commissioning period, this can be reviewed really, really quickly and resolved within the the application of the machine. So pinpointing those issues is much, much easier using automation playback. Oh, okay. That sounds uh, really great. Um... And if we go on to enhanced diagnostics, as you're showing there, um, APB allows for collaborative working. Because APB is mostly file-based, we can use existing features within Sysmac to, to uh, deliver that or distribute those files to engineers off-site, so people working remotely can be involved in looking at the downtime and resolving the issue using automation playback. Oh, okay. So, uh, for example, I already mentioned that automotive is a truly global industry, and uh, factories in Japan, in Americas, in the Europe, uh, also now uh, in upcoming countries, uh, China is, is the production is high. Uh, in India, the production is uh, increasing. There is a lot of IT support as well as, well as there, but uh, that is really interesting because of this truly global industry, uh, factories then can learn from each other by, oh, we found a mistake and it's happening there, so please update your production line in this uh, way if, if you can share this program and this fault finding, what you just showed us. That's, uh, a really interesting time and it's also time independent so, so when in the middle of the night for example an error occurs and there's nobody in that office there might be somewhere else globally uh, an engineer available to uh, watch the file and help uh, the maintenance engineer on site at that moment to resolve the issue absolutely so you can make use of skills across the globe when you have a breakdown and this could be reviewed just by using Sysmat Studio and the automation playback files. And key to the sex, success of this, um, Stanley, is the fact that it has no effect on the uh, performance of the, the machine itself. APB works outside of the, the normal machine control cycle and is safeguarded against affecting machine performance. Okay, so that, that would be great in the era of digitalization because we all know that digitalization is the magic word to uh, speed things up to analyze the data uh, and also to optimize your process because after the whole cycle of, of industrialization and connectivity it, it's now time for optimization and and uh, these uh, and digitalization helping us 
to uh, look at these files and optimize and visualize your process and optimize it accordingly. And the visualization, uh, not only in data, the bulk of data, but this is very specific data connected to your process. And uh, really interesting uh, to see that automation playback without any performance loss can do this. Yes. So some uh, simple takeaways that uh, we want to have for rewrite and resolve with automation playback in manufacturing. Um, as we have seen in the demo, uh, we can rewind and resolve according to triggers. So we have a very efficient breakdown resolution. It's not something is wrong and then we're going to connect the computer and find out what's going on. We take the bin file, we take the video file and start resolving the issues. Uh, when you are commissioning and you see that the product is not right and one product is right, other product is not right, you can overlay and synchronize uh, these tracks and find out why some settings are good, some settings are bad to create the perfect product. And also one of the most important uh, thing is the global collaboration between not only factories of a company, but also between system integrators, uh, service bodies, and other people working on the machine, because collaboration is the way that we have to work to, uh, to maintain our profitability in the industry. Uh, with this in mind, uh, we would now like to open the comments for some questions and answers, if there are any. Yes, yeah, so there's one question that's come in, Stanley, is uh, can we use the APB from a, a remote location? So, yeah, we can we can access the SD cards uh, where the files are created um, from a remote location using remote access points like our RT1 uh, unit. So um, we can have secure connections directly to the machine and retrieve the files remotely. And then, you, as we saw, use Sysmac Studio to review the data files and find, rewind, and resolve the issues with that machine. OK. So the uh, just to complete it, the, the engineer resolving the issue doesn't need to be at the machine. He needs a laptop and Sysmac Studio. That's right. So um, automation playback is resident in the machine at the point when the machine is manufacturing. Um, if the trigger point is seen, those files are created and stored on the SD card immediately, and anybody can with the right connection, the right authentication, using remote connection, come onto the machine, onto the SD card, and retrieve those files securely. Great, great. Anything else from the audience? There's another question coming. Yeah, so for commissioning, can we record and then correct virtually and see the improvements virtually? Um, at the moment, no, that's not part of the tool. There's no virtual environment uh, or digital twin to test the machine in. Um, but you can use the tool to identify the issue and make online changes to a live machine to test uh, the re resolution of the problem. We can also have simulation of code within Sysmac Studio um, so that we can test the uh, resolving code, if you like, uh, in a simulation environment, a code simulation environment, before deploying it to the machine. Great. Let's see if we have another question coming. If not, then... Then I want to uh, thank the audience uh, for the attention and contact. I think we uh, discussed the most important things that we have, but uh, I can imagine that you might have want a live demonstration that you already using Sysmac and uh, start using it. Um, you want to maybe uh, contact the local sales teams to learn more about the NX5 and the automation playback. It is what we think as a game changer, especially because it doesn't have any add-ons. It's built in into the NX5 uh, with the latest firmware updates. It is usable for uh, everybody in, in this way without any performance loss. 
And um, yeah, please contact us for some detailed explanation. Sales teams are ready to uh, to show it. And um, with that, I think we come to an end of our uh, live event. Um, thank you so much, Wayne, for doing this uh, with me. Um, what a common standard. Pleasure. It's a, it's a pleasure. And uh, yeah, please contact us. Contact uh, your local representatives. Uh, find more information on industrialomron.eu uh, about the automation playback and see for yourself uh, how this is or playback the information that we have uh, given to you. So with that, I think we are coming to an end and I ask our host to, uh, to close the session. Thank you so much. It was a really great experience. Thank you, everybody. Bye-bye.